there a King the Land Season 2 release date? The popularity of King the Land with spectators was outstanding. The South Korean drama series spent six weeks straight in the top 10 on Netflix International list. It is, however, extremely improbable that the show will return for a second season given the typical Korean series pattern. Are there chances of a part 2 of King the Land? Since its premiere in June 2023, the show has dominated the global Netflix charts, while receiving mixed reviews from reviewers and consumers alike. Furthermore, King the Land isn't exactly aiming to invent the wheel here. Every romantic cliché imaginable is included in the narrative, creating a perfect storm of romance and escape that has become incredibly compelling. So it follows that season 2 of King the Land must be inevitable. Although a second season of King the Land has not yet been officially announced, if it does happen, we shouldn't anticipate seeing new episodes until late 2024 at the earliest. The issue is that Korean dramas rarely have more than one season. Im Yoon-na and Lee Jun-ho, who respectively portray Gu Won and Chon Sarang, are the leaders of the King of Land. Because they are members of the boy band 2PM and the girl group Girls' Generation respectively, Jun-ho and Yoon-na were already well-known in Korea before acting in the show. What will happen? What will be the plot of season 2? King the Land certainly seems like one of those shows that could finish after just one season. Korean dramas seldom make a second appearance. All of the major character stories are neatly wrapped up in the end, but this show's enormous popularity might yet motivate a second season. If King the Land does return for season 2, Gu Won and Sarang's romance will likely once again take center stage. There is still plenty of dramatic material to be wrung out of this idea between the difficulties of their marriage and managing two different hotels together, particularly if new people and problems are added. The potential franchise might possibly continue with the prequel focus on Gu Won's family and the difficulties they face managing this hotel. What was the reason behind the success of King the Land Season 1? Following its June premiere on Korean TV, Netflix took up the drama and has been releasing it 16 episodes over the past two months. It has received an enormous 66 million views in that time on the streamer. This places it on par with significant US hits like The Witcher and Lincoln Lawyer. In terms of the canon of comparable rags to riches, hate to love Korean rom-coms in its genre, the show is about a cute hotel concierge Im Yun Ah, who becomes involved with the hotel's magnate's rebellious son, Lee Jun Ho, appears somewhat standard. King the Land acknowledges the negative aspects of these cliches, including how the romanticization of class conflict and labor exploitation underlies the rom-com genre's long-standing fantasy of riches, power, and privilege. It's the kind of Korean drama that has become more prevalent in the world after Parasite and Squid Game. Additionally, it's the sort of program that fills an intriguing niche in a society where unions, workers' rights, and labor exploitation are receiving increasing amounts of attention. The irony will be what's particularly rich for viewers who find themselves watching this specific great K-drama as a result of the writer's strike. Romance is a genre that in many respects is based on aspirational fantasies. In romance novels and rom-coms, the characters seek true love and when they do, they frequently discover a plethora of additional benefits. Netflix secretly published the first episode of a new drama this past week, putting a contemporary spin on the old adage that opposites attract. The pilot swiftly hooks viewers onto a developing love story between two people who just so happen to work in the same resort. Although most people might find the basic premise of this novel, which is set in modern-day Korea, to be quite cliché and boring, what makes it special relates to the main characters. By using quick time jumps in the first episode, King the Land draws the viewer into the lives and personalities of its two major characters, Gu Won and Cho Sarang. There is more than enough time to be astounded by Gu Won's stoic demeanor, as he outwits dishonest office workers and to be blindly charmed by Cho Sarang's bubbly personality as she plays a form of ear piano during her interview for a position at the King Hotel thanks to these sequences being introduced right at the start of the series and before the 
their destined first encounter. Sarang is seen working her way up from being a gym maid to actually holding the title of cast manager, while Won is soon revealed to be the affluent heir of the parent business that owns the King Hotel, foreshadowing the rough start of their relationship. Fans of the Korean drama genre will undoubtedly be enthralled by this program plan all the way to the end. After all, the climax of the first week's episode had demonstrated a startling response from Gu Won, demonstrating that we are all in for a challenging journey toward love. This genre turns romantic love into a kind of power, romanticizing privilege and actual power. In a romantic relationship, having power results in abundance, safety, and protection for both the holder and their community. The original version of this trope is the well-known Cinderella tale, in which a character from a dysfunctional family meets a character from a wealthy family and falls in love, finally providing them with a means of escaping their unhappy previous existence and a new identity as a wealthy, empowered member of society. Riches, power, and privilege are all fundamentally beneficial in this basic scenario and in endless variations. Marriage further stabilizes the wealthy character's riches and status, which benefits the community as a whole. The rich character in the usual relationship learns to become more deserving of their money so they can use it even more wisely via the development of falling in love. Do you believe that the stellar supporting cast contributed to the success of King the Land? King the Land already has a memorable and unforgettable ensemble who significantly complement the primary narrative in addition to the eccentric story and opulent plot techniques. The two characters playing the aforementioned characters, Lee Jun Ho and Im Yuna, are joined by the hotelier's two roommates, Oh Pyong Hwa and Kang Da Ul, who are respectively portrayed by Go Woon Hee and Kim Ga Yoon. Go has been in countless more Netflix films, including dramas, romances, and absurd sitcoms, while honing her comedic skills as a cast member of the Saturday Night Live equivalent of her own country. Audiences will be immediately interested in the supporting roles that these ladies portray given the breadth of their resumes. In his temporary office position for the King Company, Go Woon immediately befriends a male co-worker called No Sang Sik in the opening scene of King the Land. He decides to take No Sang Sik with him to serve as his personal secretary when he arbitrarily quits his job as a result of the manager's poor management. Actor An Seha does a fantastic job of rebounding off of Lee Jun Ho's persistent perseverance against formalities in order to bring this comic relief part to life. He began his acting career in the theater in 2011, and since then, he has starred in over 30 various television series, such as Netflix's Abyss and Vicky's The Heavenly Idol. Did you enjoy season 1 of King the Land, or are you yet to watch the web series? Do let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section. For more interesting updates, subscribe to our channel and do not forget to press the bell icon for notifications. Goodbye!